Hi, Lunchtime Live audience. Actually, this is not during Lunchtime Live. We are just, I'm here with our IT person trying to figure out what is wrong with our program and why it keeps disconnecting. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through the the episode about the pre mantises because I know it cut off last time anyway and then maybe we can just use this one. Here's the praying mantis. Okay, he's in the family Mantidae. So the scientific name is Mantis religiosa. So I think it has that name. It, it kind of means prophet or seer because ancient Greece, um, it was believed that they had supernatural powers. Um, and it does look like they're praying for insight the way they hold their uh, front legs up. Um, as we continue, you're gonna see that it's less of an act of reverence and probably more like a martial arts pose. So there's the prey mantis. They are about two to five inches long. Let me show you a different picture. Okay. You get to see the prey pose there. And here, here they are long ways. Okay. Um, so Let's start with this picture, actually. So they camouflage and they go from green to brown. And that is, um, depending on what kind of a plant they are on, it um, protects themselves. And it's also, uh, you know, better to catch prey if they can't recognize you um, as separate from the plant. You can see that they have this big triangular head and it's on a really flexible neck that um, can turn 180 degrees. And they have this beak-like snout and mandibles, mandibles are their mouth, and a pair of an antennae. So you can see, see all of that in this picture. Um, their eyes are bulging and they have two compound eyes and three small simple eyes in between so they can see in 3d and the placement of their eyes gives them a really wide field of vision so they can see movement about 60 feet away they can also hear ultrasound and detect bats echolocation calls um, so their posture is usually upright which is this picture. And again, you can see the camouflage, but they usually have that upright posture. And now I'm gonna show you the, it's really windy, so I'm sorry the pages are blowing around. I'm gonna show you this picture again. Um, so the part of their body with the head and four legs, that's the longest part and the flexible part, okay? So that's the long and flexible part. Um, and then that's called the prothorax, okay? And then they have the mesothorax and the metathorax, and that part of their body, hi Beth and Barb, that part of their body is immobile. Um, they have six legs. The front two are the biggest and are used to hunt. And you can see in the picture, they have all these overlapping spikes with a big claw adapted for catching and gripping prey. Their four back legs are just to walk. Okay, they also have, some of them have wings, not all of them. And their front wings act as camouflage and also a shield and they're pretty leathery the hind wings are delicate and clear most can fly but as i said some don't have wings at all now the male has eight abdominal segments with the final segment smaller 
and thicker antenna with which to find the females. And the female only has six abdominal segments with the final segment the biggest. And, and she has short antennae. And the males are a lot smaller. So in this picture, the color doesn't really you know, have anything to do with it. The females could be brown and the males could be green. But in this particular photo, the male is the small brown one. See how big she is. She's the green one. So their closest rel relatives are termites and cockroaches, which is kind of surprising. I thought it would be like a walking stick. Um, because they share that rocking behavior. And the reason that they have that rhythmic side-to-side -side movement is to resemble vegetation swaying in the wind. And um, so it's, you know, another sort of camouflage. And as far as hunting goes, um, they are mainly ambush predators. So they, they turn on their camouflage and they sit really still on the stems and leaves of plants and just sit there swaying, waiting for food to come to them. Um, they are primarily dernal hunters, so they hunt in the daytime. Um, they jump with extreme precision and lightning fast arms. They're kind of a lean green hunting eating machine. Um, so they eat, they're considered a beneficial insect, like if you go to a nursery, sometimes they sell them and they sell ladybugs. Um, but they're really more of a generalist because they will eat both your um, bothersome insects and your beneficial ones. Um, they are carnivores, so they like flies, mosquitoes, spiders, moths, beetles, crickets, grasshoppers, and here's where it gets interesting. They can feast on prey three times their size. So, you know, they'll eat lizards, frogs, small birds, you know, whatever they can get their hands on. Now there's a certain payback, hi April, because some of the things that they eat also eat them, like spiders, frogs, lizards, and birds. Also hornets, ants, and snakes. So, um, Females mate with multiple males, and the reason is um, to get more genetic diversity among the offspring and, and so that all the eggs get fertilized. And, you know, they're kind of hedging their bets in an uncertain environment. Um, here, I'm finding you a, a really great page now. So there's the female. And see the brown thing she's eating? She is eating the male. So they practice sexual cannibalism. And um, get ready for this. The males can keep mating without their heads. I'll give you a minute to just let that soak in. Um, this gives her the nutrients she needs to be able to lay eggs. And let me show you a picture of her eggs. Okay, so she lays hundreds of eggs and they are laid in a rigid foamy structure called Uthaca, which protects them. So they lay their eggs in the fall and then they die. And the babies hatch and you probably can't see, but they hatch in the spring and they look like little mini me's. They look like just very, tiny prey mantises. Um, when I first posted the picture of the prey mantis on the state park hat, we were out vegetation monitoring and one just hopped right on. Um, I had a lot of people on my personal Facebook ask me, um, you know, if they bite. Apparently a lot of people think that they bite um, and they don't. I mean, they could, but they don't. They don't sting, they don't bite, they don't carry infectious diseases. Um, they're actually one of the smartest insects. 
Um, they're capable of learning from negative experiences. And their lifespan is six months and some, some places I read it was six months and other places a year. So um, not long. And Barbara is asking, um, how long do the males live without their heads? And I imagine not very long. <laughs> you know, they just are getting the job done and then, and then that's it. And the females die after they lay their eggs. So um, I guess the babies don't need them. So that's all for today, and it looks like we made it all the way through Lunchtime Live without it disconnecting. So this could be great news for us. Um, I don't know what I'm doing next Tuesday on Lunchtime Live, but I have high hopes that this is fixed and we'll get all the way through it. I'll see you guys then, and um, have, a, have a nice sunny day. See you later.